Hi everyone, it is August 23rd, 2018. For two days, I really didn't have a brain that was functioning very well. I think I got it back. Let's see if I do, but I'll explain in the next video what was going on. I want to thank my subscriber for sending me along this article, Ambitious Elliott City Flood Prevention Plan would tear down 19 buildings in historic downtown. Wow. So, Elliott City, Howard County, Maryland. 2016, Elliott City, you saw cars just floating down Main Street, the streets in Elliott City, businesses were destroyed, and what did they do? They rebuilt their community, only to get flooded again in 2018. Now, when we see these areas getting hit over and over again, there's a plan. No, no, no. This is not climate change, not global warming. It is man using technology to create these floods, and don't you wish that people would stop being willfully ignorant. This ignorance is killing us. Oh, I read these articles at this point now, at this stage when this information has been out there. And so many you know, of you leave comments telling me you try to reach people. They ignore you. They call you names. They degrade you. They you know, abandon you. They think that you're crazy. If it's a family member, they want you to see a psychiatrist. They, you know, wow, man, do we have a real problem with our fellow Americans in that they just can't open their mind to do a little bit of research to find out, wow, oh, there's a lot of commercial, commercial businesses that offer weather modification services. Wow! You mean the United States government has been involved in weather modification for a really, really long time? Even before they created all of those floods in Vietnam? Really? You mean states? State governments actually contract? with these weather modification commercial companies to provide weather modification services? Wow. Okay. Yeah, you know, it, it's really getting kind of flippy, this world that we're living in. Because it's so easy to access information. And yet we have people who just refuse to do it. And they're so cemented in the lie. They won't give it up when we can give them documents, evidence, facts. We can show them that man is actually creating these weather events. No, I'm going to just believe in global warming. But when you see these areas getting hit over and over and over again, and oh, then they have a plan. They're going to reshape these communities. Agenda 2030, reshaping. These people are being so duped. And those involved, those who are working towards implementing the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan for these communities in the mega regions are laughing at all of these people. And I go through and I read the quotes from the ordinary people, and wow, it is stunning, the ignorance that we still are dealing with. Okay, I'm just going to go through some information. I will link below to everything, but all you had to do is a little bit of research, 
Now, I didn't know anything about Elliott City. I didn't know anything about Howard County. But I know that when these areas are getting hit with some kind of disaster, the repeated disasters, because I have researched, let's say, Hurricane Harvey, Houston, and Houston has their own Agenda 2030 plan. Uh, it, it, it becomes like you don't even have to do the research, but I'm just going to walk you through the research that I did on Elliott City. It literally took me about an hour and just to maybe educate, inform those who are just now getting that, oh wow, Agenda 2030, there is really a reshaping of the United States and into mega regions. And I will tell you, where is Elliott City? It is in our northeast mega region. Where is it? Right here? I believe it's right in this circle. Elliott City, you need to be reshaped for your stack impacts. Your historic district that apparently a lot of you are very, very fond of is about to be destroyed to bring you your stack and packs and your community parks where, yes, you can enjoy fun and you can walk to it and you can take public transportation to it because eventually you're not going to be able to drive. You'll be taking public transportation or riding a bicycle. Yes, because you have to save the planet. And all of you who are willfully ignorant at this point, I'm sure you're going to be riding that bicycle feeling really good about yourself because you are saving the planet. And guess what? You've been duped to believe a lie. And in that mega region, you are going to be controlled. Every aspect of your life will be controlled. Your finances, everywhere you go, you will be tracked. The surveillance will be very tight. You will have no place to hide, no place to go for any kind of privacy. And the universal basic income is coming to a theater near you soon enough. Ah, you're going to love, you're going to love being a global citizen. You're going to love the communist tyranny that's going to be ruling over you. All right. Howard County, Maryland. Howard County, you've got your Plan Howard 2030. All you have to do is just put in Howard County Agenda 2030. Wow. Came up instantly. Do that for your county, especially if you are in a mega region. But what is this? Plan Howard 2030, Howard County, Maryland, amended May 2017. It's the planning and zoning, community planning, general plan. So those of you who live in Howard County, you might want to click on this link and find out what is planned for your area. But it's it's on American Planning Association site. Make great communities happen. American Planning Association. Hmm. What might that be? The American Planning Association put forth a newsletter in 1994 tying their association not only to Agenda 21 as a comprehensive blueprint for sustainable development, but also tying it to Al Gore's Earth in the Balance and noted organizations that were coming together to implement these programs. But later on, when people got wind of the reshaping of the United States, 
dictated by the United Nations. And yeah, well, it's going to not be so pretty. It's, uh, we've got a lot of disasters that are coming because you see these gray areas? Now, why can't I get back? I can't get back. All right, you see all of these gray areas? Uh, and the colored areas, the colored areas are the mega regions. That's where everybody's going to be living. You're going to be riding your bikes and and you won't be able to travel. You're not going to be traveling to other mega regions. But all the gray area? Oh, they're getting rid of you. They're getting rid of all of you because it's just not sustainable to have people living all over the place. To have people living all over the place, you're going to kill Mother Earth. So we want to bring you into these mega regions, and we have many fabulous manipulations going on to do that. We flood you. We burn your houses down. We make it so hard for you to live in all of these gray areas. You know, your businesses get flooded. Your businesses get burned down. And that's just two disasters. So what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to find work. And then you look for work, you know, up in Maine or uh, Vermont. In these gray areas, you're looking for it. God, you can't find any, but there happens to be job opportunities in the mega regions. Wow, so you move to the mega regions. And they got ya. They got ya. Um, so, and this, uh, this is actually for the entire, why can't I get back there? So I'm going to... I'll go off, I'll click out of here, yeah, you're just going to have to wait a second, put in America, America 2050, and you go to this site, america2050.org, <gasps> mega regions, see there's a whole plan and they've been implementing it for years and years. And they have so many, so many companies and architecture firms and engineering firms and, and NGOs. And they're all implementing the United Nations plan, Agenda 2030, bringing a mega region to you. So you click on Mega Regions, and what do you have here? Wow. Okay, so you click on this box, and it will give you uh, the real big, the real big picture. You have Cascadia. You've got Front Range, Northern California, Southern California, Arizona, Sun, Corridor, Texas Triangle, and then you have Gulf Coast. Piedmont, Atlantic, Florida, Northeast, Great Lakes. And you know what? They have been proving to be a success. Why? Because the majority of Americans still prefer their ignorance over being informed and looking into what is happening in their community. That's it's rather frustrating, sometimes maddening. It sometimes pisses me off. And I know that it sometimes does all of that to you, too. So the American Planning Association. Okay. 1994, documents have been found. Uh, they had their newsletters. There was evidence that tied them to Agenda 21. And then they came out, apparently under pressure, and they, I believe on their website, have, a, have myths and facts about Agenda 21 or 2030. But they were denying any involvement with this Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 for many, many years. And you know what? They may still be denying 
that they have anything to do with Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. And you know, it's funny. It's so funny because here, uh, APA, that is not the American Psychiatric Association. It is the American Planning Association. And in November of 2017, they had a World Town Planning Day. Wow! The American Planning Association's International Division. It's that they were sponsoring activities celebrating this year's World Town Planning Day. Join planners and planning organizations from around the globe. APA and APA's International Division are excited to bring you online multimedia resources focusing on this year's theme, Implementation of United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2030, and the New Urban Agenda. Are you kidding me? That what a we live, what, what is this world? The American Planning Association denied any involvement. And yet on their own planning.org site, American Planning Association, here, implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, how is it that, how is it, you know, you have your liars, and then you very easily find the truth that they're lying and you can't get through to people. But don't you think this is a crazy world? It's a very crazy world. So, um, yeah, Howard County got the American Planning Association on it. You got Agenda 2030 coming to you guys in Elliott City. Don't you want to just go there and say, listen, you guys, don't give up your businesses. Don't give up your businesses because they want to demolish an awful lot of buildings for, yeah, their uh, new flood prevention plan. So they bring on the floods and then they got a prevention plan for you. And it just so happens to include demolishing 19 buildings to expand waterways in Elliott City. And you can, uh, if any of you are from this area, you can watch this, um, this video that was just posted today, Elliott City Flood Mitigation News Conference, and they're talking about the plan for all of you. And this plan is to enslave you. So, it's a five-year plan. Under the plan, 10 buildings would be raised on the lower end of Main Street. Uh, they will be tearing down seven residential buildings to expand a stream channel on the west side of the historic district as well as demolishing two more structures to expand a channel. They don't want, they want to protect you. They don't want any, anybody to die in floods anymore. They don't want your cars to float away. Oh, actually they do. Um, they just don't want you driving anymore. As crazy as this sounds, it is absolutely true. They want complete and utter control over you, which means the population has to decline because it's easier to control a smaller, smaller population, and it's easier to control, control people in one particular region. And it's really easy to control people when you control their finances and their ability to travel, get them out of a car, who knows, they might decide one day to go to another mega region via a car. Oh, actually, you won't be able to. 5G will prevent that. 5G, the millimeter wave, the active denial system that the military uses. You can't see it. It's an invisible 
fence. You try to go through it, and ow, it's going to really hurt. So, um, properties will be replaced. See, this is supposed to be green. Nothing works on my computer anymore. It's supposed to be the highlighting. It, all of the green just turned gray. But the properties will be replaced with a community open space to widen and deepen the channel. Oh my god. All right, so, um, yep, everybody's ignorant, who is quoted in this article. All ignorant. Yeah, we've got to do something, but we don't want to tear down our historic district. But we might, we have to adapt. Come on, guys, we've got to adapt here. Global warming, climate change, bringing about floods. Don't ever look into weather modification. No. Geoengineering. No. Don't look at the sky, too. Ignore what's right in your face. The sky. Changing because of all of the spraying. Any of you have a blue sky anymore? We don't here. Not in Anderson, South Carolina. So, in 2016, this is a quote by Kittleman. Kittleman is, I think, one of your council, uh, city council? Okay. Um, Alan Kittleman, Howard County Executive. And your county councilman, John Weinstein. These are the guys that are implementing Agenda 22. Because you had two fatal floods in 22 years. And the first one that came to you, 2016, it was one in a thousand years. That was the flood. One in a thousand years. <gasps> and then you had another one. Wow! That's quick global warming, climate change. It's coming really fast. It's coming really fast because these floods are created by men and they want to they want to accelerate the reshaping of the United States. So unfortunately when people are ignorant, they're really easily manipulated. Um, and they can do it. So, a business owner said this, two years ago it was a thousand year flood and it was frightening, but I was willing to rebuild and go back. Well, now there's another flood. I'm not willing now. I'm totally terrified. I do believe that any day this could happen again. Gotcha, Sherry. They got ya. It only took 22 months. First flood, all you guys, it was a challenge. We're going to rebuild. We're going to all stick together. And you did. So they had to hit you again to get you really scared. And your destroyed buildings, you'll turn them over for demolition. And those businesses that are still operating, well, they're in the process of having your county acquire them. Um, I highlighted Stanley Consultants. And I didn't do, you know, every bit of research. Whether or not Stanley Consultants is involved in the Howard Plan 20. 30 or plan Howard 2030 um, but I did look into Stanley consultants and I wanted to see if they were working with Ickley but I came across a Stanley Foundation and Stanley Foundation is working with Ickley Ickley is the local arm of the United Nations implementing Agenda 2030 all over the world 
but Stanley Foundation working with ICLEI, Stanley Consultants, oh, Stanley Foundation founded by Dick Stanley, who died, I think, in 2017, but left Stanley Consultants in 2013. I just want to show you. We've got architecture firms. We've got engineering firms. We've got everybody on it. The useful idiots. They have no clue what they're doing because they're completely ignorant. Some do know what they're doing, like Dick Stanley, who died last year. Um, but you have so many people involved. It's amazing. It's a brilliant, brilliant plan. Um, the evil people are really, oof, oh. they, they, they really know how to organize and get a job done. Good people, not so, not so clever. But um, what I also want to bring your attention to was another article. And I'm actually going to read some of this and then end this video. But, um, oh, by the way, Ickley. Brian ha Holland, Director of Climate Programs. He oversees ICLEI's programs for GHG emissions management and climate, climate resilience. He actually co-authored, he was a lead author on the 2014 National Climate Assessment. Do you know how slammed that assessment was by scientists saying this is not data. This is not. This is not science. All right. Not going to get into that. But wow, Brian, you have been recognized for excellence by the American Planning Association. Oh boy, it's all over the place. Now you've got rezoning proposals in Howard County, um, and it to achieve the Plan Howard 2030. But what I took note of, North Laurel is facing an increase of over 6,000 additional residents. Huh. You're facing an increase? Where are they coming from? But if the additional development in Maple Lawn is approved, in that, you know, plan, combined with the ongoing and future developments in North Laurel, there will be a total, uh, it, this will total an additional 10,000 new residents in the Southeast Corridor. Why did I highlight that? Why am I bringing it up? Because a subscriber who lives in Dallas mentioned to me, I believe it was you, might have been somebody else, but they said, we have all of these stack and packs, these apartments, this, all of this development, and the development is just sitting there empty. What, what's going on? Why are these, why are these communities knowing that they're going to get an increase in their populations. Is it because of population explosion? No! No, guys, it's because, oh God, you're gonna have so many people who's going, who will still be alive after disaster hits in all of these gray areas and they're going to be moved into the mega regions. That's why there's an awful lot of development going on in mega regions. That's what's happening. So they're building the stack and packs. They're building all of this housing. And it's going to sit until people begin to flood in because they can no longer live their lives 
in the gray areas. And yes, it can happen with a major, let's say, a huge mm, earthquake in California. Suddenly, those who survive it, they're going to be moving into the regions close by. Those all flooded in the Northeast, those of you who survive, you're going to find at one point that you're not going to have any opportunities except in the Northeast region or Great Lakes or Piedmont Atlantic. This has been going on. It's the boiling frog scenario and they're already shuffling. They've been shuffling people around via providing opportunity in the mega regions. Oh boy. This is such a it, it's just very well just to watch this all go down it's hard alright I'm not going to read this it's 31 minutes already but I hope you do maybe I will what the hell um, again I'm going to link below to everything agenda 21 course I hope you click on it if you don't know much about Agenda 21 slash 2030. The Sustainable Development Goals, United Nations, they're being implemented in our country and all over the world for the new world order, the one world government. It is happening. Um, but these lessons are really very easy to understand how it's being implemented. So lesson nine, non-governmental organizations and the Delphi method. I'll just read you a little bit of the NGOs, how they operate. The Worldwide Fund for Nature, World Resources Institute, International Union for Conservation and Nature, all of these people are involved in the United Nations plan to reshape the world for a one world government. Um, Amnesty International. And here, the non governmental organizations, National Audubon Society, the Nature Conservancy, National Wildlife Federation, Zero Population Growth, Planned Parenthood, the Sierra Club the National Education Association, the Environmental Defense Fund. So, the NGOs are the worker bees for the United Nations. They work closely with the United Nations Environmental Program. The NGOs work to get the policy adopted by one or more UN organizations organization for consideration at a regional conference. The NGOs convince the delegates at the regional conference to adopt the policies. The NGO writes a legally drawn up policy statement on the issue and the document is called convention. The NGOs lobby to get the delegates at the conference to adopt the convention. The convention is sent to national governments to be ratified, the signatories of Agenda 21. Once the convention is ratified, it becomes international law. That's why Agenda 2030, you've got an awful lot of international law and codes. And already, those codes are being implemented all over the world. The international building codes, plumbing codes. So, wouldn't that beg questions? Why are we, why are we using international codes? Well, because we're all going to be singing Kumbaya one day, and no country will be sovereign, sovereign, and the world will have one government. Cool, huh? 
once the convention is ratified, it becomes international law, then the NGOs go into full swing lobbying, in our case Congress, to write national laws that comply with the treaty. It is not uncommon for key leaders of these NGOs to be appointed to presidential councils, creating a direct official connection between the United Nations and our federal government. Once national laws are created and passed, the NGOs go to the state governments and lobby them. Why do they have to do that? Because we actually still have the facade of a constitution. And maybe there's some government officials in states that feel, you know, well, don't we have a constitution? All right, so they have to be um, manipulated and, and their delusion has to be maintained. All because of the 10th Amendment. Amendment for writing laws, uh, that dictate local policy, the 10th Amendment prohibits the federal government from getting involved in the states. So the NGOs go into those states to force their Agenda 21, 20, 30 ideas into local government by encouraging local governments to comply with their policies. The NGOs lobby Congress to include special grants to state and local governments and money talks above all. So states go, wow, we can get money? We'll do it. We'll comply. So your federal tax dollars are funneled down to the local level to help implement Agenda 21 sustainable development policies which are designed to steal your private property rights control all human behavior, control the business sector, destroy our representative republic. Well, we don't have one, um, especially since, does anybody even know that we are a constitutional republic, or at least that's what was created by our founding fathers? Because everybody just calls this country a democracy. Um, and also to indoctrinate our children in order to create good global citizens. That's lesson eight of these lessons. Lesson nine, lesson seven, destroy our representative republic. Lesson five, control the business sector. Lesson four, control all human behavior. Lesson three, steal your private property. Lesson eight is common core. That's already in the works. And no, Trump, it doesn't appear that he's going to fulfill that promise of destroying Common Core um, and create social, economic, and environmental justice. Everybody has to have a universal basic income. It's wealth redistribution. That's why they're killing off the middle class. Yes, the world's citizens. We will all be equal. And should a community or a state refuse to participate voluntarily, local chapters of the NGOs are trained to go into action. They begin to pressure city councils or county commissioners to accept the grants and implement the policies. Should they meet resistance, the NGOs begin to issue news releases telling the community their elected officials are losing millions of dollars for the community. And then those residents of the community go, hey, I want that money elected official, you need to get on board. We need to do these things. So everybody gets involved in their own demise. All right. Well, I will link below to everything. Um, circulate the information. No, you don't have to circulate my video, but please circulate the information. Try to wake up your peers, your fellow Americans, your family, your friends. Just keep trying. That's all we can do. Um, what I have been finding here, it's scary to see care, care about anything rapidly declining in individuals care about anything. So my next video is going to address that. 
All right, guys, links are below. Have a good night.